The All Powers R1500 is a confused or maybe just misadvertised little unit, but every time we go ahead and review a more expensive like name brand power station, you guys are always in the comments telling us that there's cheaper options and not everybody necessarily has the money for the expensive stuff. So we're on a mission to find a budget friendly power station that we would actually recommend. And on that hunt, we came across the All Powers R1500. We've actually reviewed another All Powers before. It was in our like Amazon video that we made where we just bought a bunch of little ones off Amazon. It was okay. It, it actually, I think it came second place overall. This one seems a little bit more confused, but regardless, you guys know here at the lab, our opinions cannot be bought. So we made sure to run this thing through some testing. But before we jump into some of that testing, we're gonna go over a super quick 60 second spec teardown for everyone that is not already familiar with the All Powers R1500. First up, this guy weighs 37 pounds, so it passed the tiny baby lift test, no problem. It's a 1,152 watt hour battery bank with an 1,800 watt pure sine wave inverter with a 3,000 watt surge. So I have no idea where they got the 1,500 number from, but here we are. It says it has a maximum AC input of 1,500 watts, which would let you charge it in about 45 minutes. And it has a maximum solar input of 650 watts, which is actually not bad. That's it's just about two hours to charge this thing up to full. In terms of ports on this guy, we have four 120 volt house plugs right here under these little doinky little flaps. There's a 12 volt car socket right here. And then we have two USB C's, two USB A's, as well as two wireless charging pads on the top, which I'm a huge fan of. I actually really wish more power station companies would do that. Most of them just leave a blank canvas up here. Take advantage of the space. I love these. On the side, we have two expansion battery ports under these flaps, which is just another thing that confuses us, which we will get to. And over here, we have your port for AC wall plug and solar connection. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot going on on this unit. It's pretty simple. It's pretty clean. And you can get all of this for $499. So if it actually performs the way it says it should, that would be a sweet deal. So most importantly, with a cheap unit like this, you need to know if it works. Before we get into what we like and what we don't like, we're gonna go over the results of our testing. We ran this unit through some of the basic tests that we run basically all of our power stations through, and it got interesting really, really quickly. As always, here at the lab, it's not a perfect science, but we got started with an efficiency test. So efficiency is important because if this says it's a 1,100 watt battery bank and you plug a heated sleeping bag into there and you're relying on that thing to keep you warm throughout the night, if that heated sleeping bag is 100 watts, you would expect it to last 11 hours. If this thing is 100% efficient, if it's only 80% efficient, it's gonna last like eight and a half hours and that's a huge time difference when it comes to staying warm. Efficiency is really important. Obviously the fans running and the inverter converting from DC to AC does consume some power. So this is a 1,152 watt hour battery bank with an 1,800 watt inverter. So we ran about a 1,560 watt-ish load, which gets it nice and close to the top end. So the fans should be running, the unit should be getting pretty hot and using some power. And it should have lasted 44 minutes. It actually lasted 25. Okay, that was not expected. I pressed this button to wake the screen up. It was at like 20% and it just died. <laughs> what the hell? That's because it overheated. So I went to plug this thing in because I thought, well, that result was just absolutely terrible. When I plugged it into charge, there was a little red light flashing on the screen here telling me that the unit had overheated. When you look at it with our thermal gun, there was no obvious hot spots. I mean, the plugs were pretty warm, like the surface right here, but there was nothing you could see that was overheating. So whatever was going on must have happened deep inside. What's really weird to me is that when a unit overheats, it should still have some sort of functionality programmed into it where it it saves enough power to keep the fans running. Everybody should know that when things are overheating, it's even like a car. If your car overheats and you turn it off, the fan shuts off, everything shuts off, the coolant stops flowing, all of a sudden your car actually gets even hotter. So this thing, in my opinion, when it's overheating, it should have at least had the fans stay on to kind of circulate some air because it can do a lot of damage really quickly if it gets too hot. Anyways, that first test came in at like 57% efficient. It was absolutely terrible. I was wearing pants in the garage. It wasn't a hot day. Anyways, we will come back to this. Since it was dead, we started running the charge speed test after I let it cool down, of course. This unit advertises a 1500 watt 
AC input. I never saw it go past 1,020 watts ever. Actually, not just on the charge speed test, but I can't plug this into any outlet or any power station or anything and get it up to 1,500. It should have charged in about 45 minutes. It actually charged in two hours and eight minutes, which is a huge flop. But that was charged, so we went back to the efficiency test and tried to revisit it a little bit. I went ahead, I plugged my meter into one of the sockets and it showed it was only getting 108 volts, which was kind of my suspicion. And you can actually see if we put a different power station right beside it and you plug the same load into that power station, it reads as just over 1800 watts. Whereas this is only reading it as about 1500 watts because it's limiting the voltage. So instead of these plugs outputting 120 volts, they're only outputting 108. You can even hear it in the heat gun. When you plug the heat gun into this, it sounds a little bit lower than when you plug the heat gun into a different power station, it sounds a little bit more aggressive. So it is technically not running 1800 watt load. It is technically running a 1500 watt load because it is limiting voltage. It's not actually outputting that much power, but just to freaking not have it overheat again, I dropped the load a little bit. This time I ran a 1326 watt load, given that it's a 1,152 watt battery, it should have lasted about 52 minutes. It actually lasted 43 and a half, which is not bad. That's over 80% efficient, which you would expect from a small power station like this. Normally, and I say this all the time in the videos, these cheaper power stations perform way better sometimes than the more expensive ones because they're not doing a good enough job of keeping themselves cool and they're not going to have the longevity built into them. This one is just a prime example because it literally overheated during testing. So the second test, surprisingly, was at about 83% efficiency. And another surprise, when I plugged this thing in to get some power back into it, I found out that it had overheated again, even at the smaller load. Same day, same temperature in the garage. I was wearing pants, wasn't hot. I don't know what to tell you. Moving on, surge. It says it's rated for 1800 watts. I ran an 1850 watt load on this thing and it ran for over a minute, which was pretty impressive. As soon as you try to spike it to the 3000 watts, it just shuts off. It doesn't surge very well at all. A little bit, yes, a lot, no. In terms of solar input, it does work, however, it's a little bit finicky. I was having trouble getting to the 650 watts because it's only rated for, I believe, 60 volts and 13 amps, which basically just means we have a solar array with a bunch of 20.2 volt panels. So when you multiply them to get them up to 600-ish watts, you're actually at like 62 volts. So it won't work on this thing. So you need some lower voltage panels and you need to be able to stack them up to get to the 650 watts. I could only get it to about 400 watts, but again, if you pick out the right panels or maybe all powers panels that they sell, they have a lower voltage rating. I don't know. It worked for 400 watts, but it kept setting off alarms when I tried to go any higher. When it comes to pass through though, which is super important, basically if you had something running like your computer off of one of these plugs and the battery dies, if you plug it into the wall, can it pass power through to your computer and then take the rest of the power and charge the battery back up at the same time? It can do that, which is good news. It can do AC pass through successfully and solar pass through successfully, which I love to see. And when it comes to sound tests, it's like a medium loud, which is surprising because it overheated. When I ran a heavy load to make the sound test happen, the fans are running. But when you plug it in to charge it and it's overheating, the fans don't even kick on that aggressively to cool it down. So whoever programmed this, what are you doing? Moving on from there though, jumping into what we like about this little power station. I really, really like the handles right here. I think a lot of companies could take a note of this. It's extremely sleek, just a little pocket that goes up right here for you to stick your hand into. They're nice and deep. I, I love these handles. Very nice to pick up. It's a pretty light and honestly decent looking little unit. It stole some of its design cues. These little green fins remind me of the blue ones you find on Anchor products. I don't mind the look of it. I actually think it looks pretty good. It has enough ports to do everything you would need from a unit this size, it has the charging pads on top. It's a good entry level unit in terms of what it can do. We also like the price. It's super cheap. It's literally half the price of all these other units. So even if it only performs at half the performance, if you were to do something with this, like go camping and you're just running a small fridge, the chances of it overheating are probably a lot lower. This would probably perform just fine. Like if you're just using it for small stuff. When it comes to things we don't like, I just hate it, but there's a lot more. 
And we're gonna start with the fact that All Power's website is just riddled with lies. They are just misleading people left, right, and center, arguably scamming them. Don't hate me. I'm just here to tell you the truth. This unit is sold as expandable. It's got two expansion ports right here on the side, but on their website, they only sell one expansion battery, the B3000 or 35, something like that. And it doesn't work with this unit. It only works with one of their bigger units. So maybe they stopped selling the battery. Maybe they haven't produced the battery yet. I don't really know. The fact that it's sold as expandable and it even has ports built onto the side of it, yet you can't buy an expansion battery for it. That's not the truth. So I don't like that. Their website also, with one of the largest photos on the website, advertises that you can use an app. It actually says it in some really bad verbiage. I downloaded both All Powers apps because they actually have two for some reason. Neither of them worked with this unit because this unit has no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or at least no button to access it. Both apps say press and hold the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi button and this unit doesn't have that button. And I tried pressing a, an array of other buttons and it just isn't there. There's no way to connect to this unit. It doesn't have an app. They lied. It also says it charges in 45 minutes. Doesn't do that. And I could sit here and gripe about it all day, but the reality is uh, I just don't like that it's limiting voltage. That's not good. Not all of your appliances are gonna run properly off of that. That's actually gonna mess some shit up. It's just not good. Like what the f is going on there? I don't know. It's only giving out 108 volts. That's not proper. It should not be doing that. It then makes you believe that your loads are less when you then overheat it because it's doing all kinds of stupid stuff. I would just say as a summary, something else we don't like is the results of our testing. Bad. It's just bad. When it comes to comparisons, obviously they're gonna be a little bit more expensive. But I would look at one of these two units. This is the Anchor F1500, so direct competitor. This is the Jackery 1000 Plus. All three of these units are pretty similar. This has a 1264 watt hour battery with a 2000 watt inverter, so more than this does. This has a 1536 watt hour battery with an 1800 watt inverter, so similar to this one. This guy's about 849, this guy's about 999. When it comes to Jackery, only buy something that looks like this with their new design. Don't buy one of the older with the handles across. You're getting scammed if you buy those because those are the old battery style. This is advertised to last 3500 cycles till 80% battery capacity. The old old ones are only 500 cycles. So it's like a fraction of what this one can do. So if you do end up going the Jackery route, just be careful with that. Otherwise, we have videos on both of these. So if you're interested, go check out one of those videos. I'll leave the links in the description down below. If you really don't wanna spend the money and you wanna get this guy, I wish you the best. In life, you typically get what you pay for. And I think that this is a great example of that. So if you guys have any other cheap units that you want us to review or take a look at that might do a little bit better than this or that you guys think would do a little bit better than this, leave them in the comments down below. We would actually like to find a unit that is cheaper that we could recommend to people to save them some money. This didn't make the list. So that is all I got for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you guys next time. Peace out and stay charged.